Hey everybody, Stephen Bogman here from Pro Physique, and today I want to talk about how to succeed in prep. So what's up everybody? I hope you're all having a great day so far. Man, how do we succeed in prep? So I know this one's gonna probably hit home for a lot of competitors, but for those of you who maybe aren't competing now or aren't competing yet, there's still some really good caveats here that can help the everyday dieter as well. For those of you who are maybe just looking at how to maximize the progress that you're getting, make sure you're doing all the right things to be successful and maybe get to just a little bit healthier place with your lifestyle stuff as well. And so obviously a lot of these things are going to be towards a more extreme side. And so that's what we want to understand here for those of you who may not be prepping, <clears throat> is that prep is an extreme thing. And it does, for the vast majority of people, take a pretty extreme approach. And so when we keep that in mind, we know that if we're doing some lifestyle stuff, we can maybe work a little bit more uh, you know, of the other things and malleability into those things. But for those of us who are in prep, the stage awaits. And when the stage awaits, we understand that it is very important that we meet those conditioning criteria to make sure that we're going to be as competitive as possible when we bring our physique to stage. And with that in mind, it's very important that we have that structure. We have that ability to make sure that we are hitting those goals, hitting our numbers as well as possible and doing all the right things to make sure that the months of prep, the money in our suits and our tan and our coaching and all those other things aren't going to waste. And so if we want to make sure that we're making the most out of all those things, there's some very important points that I wanna make that I think will help us to be more successful. The first thing that I wanna talk about in terms of how to get the most out of your prep and to make it the most successful that you can is cook your own food. I know. Oh man, that sucks. You mean go out to eat less? Yes, go out to eat less. <laughs> When we cook our own food, we are in complete control. That is a wonderful and beautiful thing when we are trying to have the most consistent dietary intake as possible. And so when we are in control of all of the variables, there are less question marks. There are less things up for debate. There are less things to go awry. And that's a great thing. There's nothing wrong with going out to eat. There's nothing wrong with doing that even in prep. With the condition that we're aware of all of the things we need to be aware of. Now, when we go out to eat, there will always be a little bit of variation in terms of what is the actual portion size, okay? And there's also going to be variation in terms of how they prepare that. And this is something that can really, really add up. Because if we go out and we get chicken and broccoli or chicken and vegetables and whatever it is when we go out to eat, yes, we're out to eat, we're in a social environment, we get to enjoy our time. We have to be aware of how we order that and how they prepare that. Remember, restaurants generally are in the business of keeping you eating there, which means they're going to make the things as palatable as possible. Generally speaking, that means butter on vegetables, right? That means butter when we cook. That means a lot of extra oils and things like that that can add up in calorie intake. And for some of us, maybe if we don't, I know people who can't really digest butter well. It gives them a lot of issues. It can create digestional stress and create some more issues there. So understanding that if we go out, there are obviously going to be things we cannot control and estimations that we're making there. But if we have to, we make those estimations come into a smaller window by knowing how to order. No butter, no oil, please. Make sure that we do that. If you really want to, you can always weigh your food out at the restaurant as well. But for me, I have found that estimations are normally okay there for myself. And for me, it's not worth it to, you know, have to bring my scale and do that around the people I'm going out to eat with. They would get it, they would understand, hell, I'm sure they would be supportive. It's just a me thing. However, if I eat before I go, I can still go, enjoy my time, I'm not hungry, I ate my meal right before I got there, 
things are good, and I've been 100% in control of my diet that day. The second thing, it's gonna piggyback, I don't know, sorry, um, but it's gonna piggyback on that one in terms of making sure you're cooking your own food, <laughs> making sure we're weighing everything out by weight. Ooh, this one's tough. And this one, I think peanut butter is probably the best example I can give. Now, competitors generally, if you've been a seasoned competitor, you, you understand that uh, a tablespoon of peanut butter is not a spoonful of peanut butter. However, for a lot of us, maybe we haven't gone that hard or we're still getting into it. Remembering that a tablespoon of peanut butter is, I believe, 16 grams and a ser typical serving size is two, which is 32 grams. That is not the same as just going in and getting a spoonful of peanut butter. <clears throat> and again, it doesn't just apply to peanut butter. It can apply to anything, but peanut butter tends to be one of those prep and diet food options where it's very easy to go overboard on, okay? And so making sure that we're weighing everything out, again, allows us to be accountable and accurate with our food intakes. That calorie intake, along with our you know, outgoing calorie expenditure, is going to facilitate whether or not we're able to make it to that stage lean point. So very, very important that not only are we in control, we know what kind of foods we're getting, we know our portion sizes, but we're accurate with that data as well. Using that food scale, doing it on a normal basis and a consistent basis is going to make sure that we have those things down, right? Third thing that I wanna say, and this one piggybacks on that, is food choice. So along with controlling our food, and food choice is gonna be part of that, understanding that we all have different digestional systems. Some of you may be like me, where you can digest pretty much anything. You don't really have a big issue with it. I have what we like to refer to as the iron gullet. Okay? Now, again, other people don't. Like I said, some people can't digest butter. Some people don't do good with too much cruciferous vegetables, too much fiber. So being aware of what's going on with your digestion can be very important. And not only being aware of terms of foods you already know you don't do well with, whether it's lactose, whether it's certain vegetables, whether it's certain food options like apples or whatever it might be, but also paying attention to how your digestion may change during prep, because this is a normal thing that can happen. And so obviously during prep, if we find that digestion is changing, we want to pay attention. Pay attention to the food choices we're using and when digestional issues are happening. That way we can make appropriate changes to make sure that we're not creating extra digestional stress that may be preventing us from doing the things we need to do or making the progress we need to make. And that's super important, okay? So a lot of these things have been food related. Let's go on water related. Drink enough fluids. Drink enough fluids. For me, your pee should be pretty lightly colored. For most individuals, that's going to mean at least a gallon a day, somewhere from a gallon to a gallon and a half. Not only do you wanna make sure you get enough fluids, you also wanna make sure you, want to, you get enough electrolytes and salts. Remember, you were athletes, and those are important pieces of the puzzle of muscle contraction and performance, okay? So make sure your salts and your water intake are good. And I'll leave it at this last one, making it real simple, keep training hard. Okay, the same things that we do to build muscle, lifting heavy, putting an effort into the gym, doing those kind of things are the same kind of training philosophies that are gonna get us to keep muscle during a dieting and prep phase. So the more that we can really keep lifting hard, the better we're gonna be. If you've been lifting heavy and lifting hard and you're getting into prep and you're finding that your energy is going down, don't just make a 180 and go completely away from that. Yes, absolutely. Be smart, prevent injury. Don't put yourself in a place where you're going to get hurt. But don't go from doing sets of six all the time to doing sets of 20 all the time, okay? Maybe we go to 12 or we go to something that's a little bit more in the middle and we moderate that so that we still have that semblance of intensity, but yes, we're doing the right things to moderate and manage injury risk. So just some prep time tips as the year's getting ready to get going with competition season in swing. And I know a lot of us getting ready to step on that stage. So I hope this helps and we'll talk to you all soon.